So in this enthralling video, we are going to continue making our rooms and we're going to make it so that they have some items in it that are generated um, randomly as well as uh, some destructible boxes and stuff like that. So we're just going to create more, one more room before we get into that. We'll call this the fourth. We can make it a room size 10 and the room is going to start at 4x right there and y is going to be 10 times 50 and we want it to be minus so we'll just go minus multiplied and the horizontal down I believe should be at 5 and we're just gonna leave these other ones blank So I think we should have four rooms now that all have doors that you can enter into. Sweet. All right. So what we're going to do is set up our destructible stuff so this is a destructible box so we're going to create a uh, two-dimensional thing happening um, and it's going to have to fit in size of inside of the room size so we'll just go counter equals zero um, while counter is less than room size And we'll also create counter two equals zero while counter two is less than room size. Okay, increase counter two. Okay. And so we're gonna do a if generate random Two equals we'll do generate random three equals one so there's a 33% chance uh, we are going to add a destructible box for this case and we are going to want to place it at the counter so let's just get rid of this because it's kind of confusing me so so let's say we have a room of size 5 and the first time through we want to at 0 0 so it needs to be um, plus 50 and it needs to be counter times 50 plus 50 do the same thing for this one but with counter 2 and I think this actually needs to be minus 1 no let's let's find out yeah I think it has to be minus 1 because of our plus 50 thing happening so we don't want to place it on top of the wall
So that's the first room. So let's see if we actually So okay, we might need to compensate for the room start because it would work for this one, but it needs to compensate for the other rooms. So like for instance, this one had a yeah, room start x and room start y. So we have to do plus room start x plus room start y and this should be generating destructible boxes 33% of the time in the first room Not sure what's going on with that. This has happened before though. Whoa. Weird. Let's try commenting this out and see if it runs. Okay, it ran that time. Now let's uncomment it, see if it runs. Oh shit, I know what's wrong. We don't have the counter, so it's an infinite loop. Oh, it should work. Okay, so we just randomly created these boxes to spawn in. So let's make it so that um, we can do another random thing. We'll just make it int um, temp random equals generate random we'll create it 5 then it's 20% chance and then we'll call this variable temp random and then we can do if temp random equals 2 if temp random equals 2 then we want to spawn an enemy so in order to spawn an enemy we can just copy this code and the set position is going to be the same as that box so now we should be spawning an enemy in 20% of the time as well in the very first room Yep. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of all the enemies that we've been spawning in just happenstancely. Um, so that's room two. Yeah, let's get rid of that. Now the only enemies that should be spawning are the actual ones that are being generated in the very first room. So that is 
a randomly generated room. Those enemies were randomly generated, and so were the boxes. So we just got a power up. And so it would be very easy to do the same thing with um, the other rooms. So I think before we do that, we're going to make it so that the um, gill that's shown is following our player in a view as well. So we will go to, yeah, we're in main. The gill will go um, text dot set position and we'll go player one dot rack dot get position dot x and then we'll just make it uh, how about minus window dot get size dot x divided by two and window dot get size dot y divided by two so now our gill is always being shown at the top when we move but we're getting a little bit of jiggles happening so that might be able to be fixed uh, depending on where we do this update um, so let's just try some random spots see if it does it still doing it there Text display. Okay, well, I'm, I'm not really sure, but I'll probably figure it out when I'm not doing anything, just randomly. Uh, so we'll just leave that there, and it can just be a bit glitchy, but it works. Uh, so what were we doing? Oh yeah, we're gonna get the all the rooms to randomly generate stuff. So this won't be that bad. We're just gonna copy that code. So paste that. Okay, so do 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 do. It should actually be automatically working for the second room now, so let's find out. Yeah, it did, sweet. So I think it's drawing the rect for the item drops. No, it's not. Oh, well, that's fine. Um, yeah, let's do it for the other rooms as well. So if we wanted to, we could like make it so that there's less of a chance uh, in certain rooms or something. Like let's say the second room, we could make it so that there's like a one in ten chance for each of these things to happen. Um, that might actually be a little bit better. Um, the third one. We can make it 
like 1 in 15 for each of that to happen. And then the last one we can make it like 1 in 20. And we could add anything we want here. Like uh, this is spawning an enemy. This is just spawning a destructible box. But uh, like we haven't really created like unique items and stuff. It's We've just been pretty lazy and the sprites are really ugly and stuff like that. But we could create any items we want to be spawned in the room. We could have multiple different types of enemies. They could be spawned randomly into the room. It could just be like uh, the Binding of Isaac, that video game. Um, functionally, it's sort of the same thing that we're doing here. Uh, in that game, you enter a new room, and uh, then all the stuff is generated, and it's stored in the memory. Uh, and I think the guy's name is Edmund McMillan, and he was talking about how he really went in-depth about the uh, random generation and the uh, drop generation and we've done a little bit of that ourselves it would just be a matter of really going out and spreading the branches out like uh, let's say you get a, a rare sword to drop and then maybe instead of getting the rare sword there's a 10% chance of getting an ultra rare sword and then instead of the ultra rare 10% chance of getting a legendary and you could just do that at Finium or whatever. There we go. So it's never good to spawn on an enemy. But this is kind of cool because we could make these uh, little yellow boxes actually be like crates and they could look pretty cool. And adding like uh, a wall texture to the walls and stuff like that and like a uh, floor texture to the ground that would be pretty dope as well um yeah but it's sort of kind of looking like a video game now and so in other videos we're going to um add some more stuff and i'm just going to take a look at some of the things that were on that checklist, if there's any left for this. Okay. Yeah, we did that. We put enemies in rooms and we connected the custom rooms together. So, thanks for watching this video and I'm going to think of some more stuff instead of thinking on the uh, camera and we'll be adding more stuff in the future videos.